talk was to everybody about the, the move from California to New Zealand. <laughs> Crappy. <laughs> I, you know, I had anything to do with it. I mean, I, I, I let fans know that, you know, I, I had nothing to do with it and then how to, that there was, you know, you talk to the Disney people and that got me in big trouble with Disney people. So, uh, you know, I definitely I didn't like it, but, you know, it's, it's a business decision. Thank you. you, know, you do. I, I could just say one thing about that because at that time I was back, I was working, I think, on Server Server, and uh, the whole company was shut down. Everybody was yeah, like, small, small, so everybody in spot. I stayed for a year, and I mean, all my department stayed at, at the last year of the show. And my friend Johnny stayed, he was like the only one in the building. They, they fired everyone. And he, he stayed in the building and did uh, some anime thing we did. Uh, what was something anime we did at that point? I think you guys would know. Anyway, Digimon, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did quite a lot of those. He did those. And then, um, and then everybody was gone. It was just so weird they had this building there paying a gazillion dollars a month with all the top of the end. We had the best year in the world in this place. And they just left it. So, so, so the Saban, when, when Disney bought Saban out, uh, Eric Roman, who was basically you know, kind of running that part of it, put together a huge presentation and basically let us just be Saban, let us just keep going on. They had no interest. Okay, I love those stories. Uh, I was wondering after you talked about how uh, Hans Saban tried for years to uh, get it going, and then when they finally got it, that uh, Fox didn't really believe in it. After it became so big, I was just curious how much bloating he did. <laughs> All. <laughs> he also was really smart because you were saying talking about he was, he was using X Men as leverage to get the Power Rangers made. As soon as Power Rangers took off, he said, "Okay, you want Power Rangers?" All this old crap that I couldn't sell for the last 10 years, and all of a sudden they were selling all around the world. Yeah. It exploded. The we company did, just exploded. We did thousands of episodes of shows, probably 50 to 100 different shows, you know, each having a 50 to 100 episodes of anime and different kind of things. It wasn't all anime, it was just Japanese animation or whatever. We just redubbed it. We didn't worry about getting the words exactly right or the names exactly right. We just made it something different. We made all those go with Power Rangers stuff. I, so I was one time going to the network with him. Uh, I just kind of like caught a ride with him. And, and I just flat out, I said, hi. He was the hardest working man I'd ever met. I'm like, why do you keep doing this? You're already rich, you can retire. And he said, if I retire, I'd be dead in two weeks. And that's sort of the guy he is. And he, he's still one of the hardest working men. And he actually said, John, if I retire, I'll be dead in two weeks. Do you <laughs> Next question. <clears throat> um, uh, the Zero Rangers were supposed to first uh, Sentai, but Sentai before had crossovers with old seasons. Was there any talks about like uh, changing the team for Die Ranger or whatever, so they can have crossovers with the last season? They, they didn't start doing the, the, team, the regular team ups up until about, about Car Ranger. Uh, no, O Ranger. Uh, yeah, it was o, o Ranger versus Car Ranger got adapted to the Bangers of Two Worlds. Right, uh, right. So we didn't start, so they didn't have the crossovers then to, to, to the crossover players. They didn't start up until, like the first time they did it, we adapted, they adapted it in the show. But the Sentai, the Sentai crossovers, using the Die Ranger footage, I uh, mean, I'll just say the main reason, like before that, the next would say, have you seen those villains? They were they were regular humans in black leather outfits. You could not, you know, get replacements for them. Well, if I recall correctly, uh, one of the well, there was, the just, yeah. there were there were two major issues. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. One was that um, uh, this, that they all had distinct weapons, and people were afraid that they could start snapping each other. And that the other was um, just that the Mike Morton team had become so iconic. Right. I know it's partly correct, and you gotta remember we were all scrambling. That was what to do at that point in time. And I was, I was, I was not involved with the production part of it as much. That I was just, they would just take whatever writer, do whatever story you would do, they would whatever things they wanted to do, and throw it at me and say, "Okay, fix it." So I wasn't worried about how to fix the next season. I was worried about how to fix that episode and have it air in four days. So <laughs> it, was, it was much more. It was, it was much more manic. Than uh, figuring stuff out in advance. Yeah. 
The, the two things I can say on that is that, uh, one, the earlier Japanese footage isn't as good, just like with us. They, they had processes better. But secondly, once Power Rangers became successful, the Japanese company, I mean, they wanted money. They wanted a cut. You have to realize that uh, Saban had bought those things for nothing. I mean, I met the guy he bought them from, and you know, everyone at the office in Japan was just like, we sure you know, got this sucker to buy this stuff. I mean, he bought it for, he bought these episodes for just nothing over there. And then once it became a huge U.S. success, then everything started to cost millions of dollars. I, th I think that was something that's a bit of a misconception. When, when I hear people ask about um, things being planned in advance, yeah. um, I think they forget about, as a, you, you if looking in the context of shows nowadays, where you have like, you know, what, where you have like, you know, Westworld or True Detective, and all these shows where you're doing a clear beginning, middle, and end idea. And back in, in the 90s, when you guys were putting out shows, the idea was you get the show on the air and you put out as many episodes as you can until they make you stop. I don't think there was ever the that. And the first show, I think, that really had a multi year plan was like that one five, which premiered around the same time Power Rangers did. So that was not a big thing. Power Rangers started having like, very specific, especially Jonathan and Chip, they got very aim about trying to plan things out. Once everything settled down, but for the first three or four seasons, it was, we did, it was not going to settle down. And it wasn't so much that we weren't planning, it's just that there was time to get something done and get, to get up here. So how, how much turnaround do you have for Ninja and Ninja, like, other than the, the episodes where we had the cast take those ones, like, we're like, what, like, what, like, eight, one episode? I always had about two weeks from they give me the final block picture to setting up your written. If I didn't write it, someone's write it. The casting over to the recording, to fixing everything all those days to get it set into the for mix. So maybe two weeks. So two weeks to make an episode from beginning to end. Well, no, that's from my end. They had. They probably had. It's probably two months. They probably had six weeks for them. Yeah. And uh, you know, two weeks from my end. That's about the generous. I mean, they have been as little as four or five days. Yeah. I, I, I think something to keep in mind on that is. Keep in mind, it's not two months and then the next episode. These are all, this is all parallel. Yeah, that's why I think it's like six episodes about the same time. Yeah, the, the first season, they had this theory that, I don't know if it was Chip or Jonathan came up with, of blocking them, basically shooting them in groups at the same time. Right. Yeah, I think they called them blocks, but it was, I mean, it was a new idea, but they would take four scripts and treat it like they were shooting a movie so they could, you know, go to a location and shoot scenes. Yeah. For a different, well, this was a new idea, and so it kind of messed with the schedule because post production would get four episodes at a time. Yeah. So it wasn't like you'd get one each week, it would be like every month you'd get four episodes dropped. So um, when, when the show was first done, they had a single habit which made this show possible. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a, a, it's a non-linear computer editing system. And um, they ended up having to buy like two more habits just to get it done, which like, you know, these were expensive machines at the time. They freaked out over that. But it just wasn't possible. There's so much footage coming in in these huge chunks. It was also, as far as I know, the first show ever that we had, to, that post-production was part of production. Yeah. So uh, we built the studio that I worked at on the production set, on the set, we were upstairs, Zordon was downstairs from the like I love Zordon now. And uh, when, when the actors take their breaks, I go down the ground and give me two minutes ago, and I have what? Oh, she, she's on the set, shut up, give me the show done, and then she'd go back down and shoot her scenes. So it was really insane to do a production at the moment. All right, next question. Yes, uh, in season three, um, they became kids, and I was wondering uh, what the decision-making was behind that logic. Um, I heard rumors that they wanted to make Alien Ranger spin-offs, so I wanted to know what was going on behind the scenes around that time. Like, you may not believe this, but you guys might know this, but I, I 20 some odd years ago. Okay, so yeah. so the, the story I heard was that partially it was A, the actors needed a break 
And yeah. it's turning them into kids, let them get a cheaper people to do it for a while. Heiner had already been like realizing that kid actors sold well. This is part of like, you know, why they had you know Beatle Wars and stuff. Like they realized that the kid stuff sold. But also they also realized like part of how interesting was using the Japanese footage. But because they continued to use the same suits, they, they could get found themselves using less and less of Japanese footage, which meant that all that money Heiner was spending on buying episodes from Japan wasn't going as far. So here's some alien rangers in different costumes, made it possible for them to use the Japanese footage again. And you know, get that get that money out. Okay. So, but yeah, part of what I've heard was these give the actors a break because they've been though they had a grueling schedule. Like they had what yeah. fourteen hour days at times. A lot, a lot of times, yeah. I I, I, I say we're getting paid. I will say that um, you know, as as odd of a twist as it seems, it it was I I think an intelligent way of giving the actors a break while still making it clearly temporary and giving the idea of additional rangers in the world to kind of transition into those, the actors coming back or in a new form. So I think that would be an But yeah, my, my, what I heard was they needed a break. Yeah. And some of those guys got vacation time. <laughs> I guess they did. You know, they filmed season two at the same time. I have to look at it again, but maybe remember. Get the final brain cell people. Um, hi, I just, first off, I want to say thank you all for, you know, taking your time to come here and, you know, just sharing your stories. I want to say, um, you guys are You guys are coming out with us, we really appreciate it. I want to say, you know, changes always need to be happening for, you know, any production. But once Fox Kids, um, took the pilot and greenlit it for the series, what were some of the, uh, oddest changes or critiques that they had with it that made you say, really, all this, and you want to complain or change this? So, what I recall was um, Fox was panicking over the amount of weapons and uh, hits to the head in the first episode, uh, especially the pilot. And there was a meeting down, we, we went down there, and they were saying, let's cut this stuff out. And I remember I'm freaking out over it basically, that's the show. I mean, but their pitch was, let's just cut it out in the first couple episodes, and then we'll put it back in. And I don't know if that actually ever ended up happening, because the, nope. the, 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 um, the original first episode, when Chucky came in, I think he took like episode 27, I want to say, and turn it into the first episode. So it like really became crazy. But uh, yeah, the, the very first episode is a complete freak out because uh, broadcast standards and practices were freaking out over the amount of weapons and fighting. And they were like, let's just cut this down. And it seemed like arbitrary. They were just like, we just want half as much weapons and fighting in the show. And so we're like, well, this is our show. <laughs> I got the best Fox. No, we ever got that love from Ann. When Ann Knapp used to be the Fox executive, and uh, the note came back that said, "That is hysterical, losing." Oh. So I still keep using that. That's that's the reality of dealing with that. That's fantastic. Losing. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, my question is for well, anybody who can um, answer this. I've noticed that they one time had. Uh, Spawn had a pilot for a series of what would be Galaxy Rangers, but it never came through. I always wonder, why didn't it come through? Uh, I mean, the, the Galaxy Rangers was like the, like the one that I did. The, the pilot. I, 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 it, it, it never aired. I mean, I actually saw a video on YouTube right, saying yeah. that like Trini, her original last, her last name would have been, instead of Trini Kwan, you would have had Trini Crystal had this Galaxy Ranger series made the life. Well, I mean, that's the thing, as I said, uh, Heinz Saban kept trying for years to get the show, uh, telling the tell uh, networks, I, and no network was willing to buy that until Fox got strong-armed. I, I think one of the, the big things to keep in mind is, it's true still today, Power Rangers is very different from anything else really on TV. It's a very different process, and it's, you don't see live action, serious action-oriented programming for children. That's, it's pretty much the only heavily 
impact-oriented show for kids. And that, that alone can spook uh, censors. Beyond that, um, the fact that it was a meshing of Japanese and American footage uh, limits, to an extent, the amount of control the studio can have over what it looks like. Uh, it, it, when nothing like it had been done before, it would have been a gamble to go on. And to my knowledge, it was what, Margaret Lash, that Fox kid, who yeah. really, she, yeah, she, she was. Has, she championed it for sure. Yeah. Like, yeah, and that's really what it had, had to be. They had to find someone who was able to look past how big a gamble it was and just enjoy it for its in, insanity. Um, and I think that was really, it took them that long to find that person. Thank you. I understand that Doomsday would have been the original finale with Rita being destroyed, but how would that have happened if there was no footage of the Jew Rangers ever fighting Pandora? Um, well, we, uh, having read an early script, because uh, uh, early draft scripts uh, have been found, there will be five high conventions that we scan them and we're like precious, precious gold. Um, they used the footage from Japanese episode 50, where the Zoo Ranger, where at the end, the Megazord get, pretty much shows up and blasts them. Like, uh, the, at some point, there is a script written. I don't know how much that was, it was just kind of big into it. The script drafts go through a million things. Um, basically, the Rangers would end the news they just defeating Rita, sealing her, sealing her back up the side, and then, uh, and then, yay, happy ending. Like, even if there wasn't footage, uh, okay. yeah, let me put it this way. Even if there wasn't footage necessarily of Rita being pushed into the dumpster or anything, um, I trust that you guys would have found a way to like play a laser blast at the dumpster in reverse so it looked like it was going back in. Oh, there so there was we cheated a lot. I, I, I've noticed. <laughs> there was there was a, a special effects like an early CGI studio built at Motion Video. Or was it no not modern modern, modern. yeah modern video. Uh, won the bid to do Power Rangers, and so basically most of the work was done over there. They built, and they had a really good guy, I forget the name of him, but they had a really good guy on CGI. He was one of the first innovators of it. So, I mean, the show had good effects for the time, and uh, they weren't found the way. So, Thank you. on that subject, there is a, a fan rumor that I want to be destroyed forever, which was that the Japanese actress for Rita got flown out to do filming on the Yeah, I don't think that's I don't know. No, I. <laughs> yeah. Not that I ever heard of. Yeah, I, I, I think you might be confused. Do you know what her job was before she was on Power Rangers? What, uh, Machika Soda? Yeah. Well, which, which, which job? I know that she did other Sentai films throughout the franchise. Tell us, Doc. Or is it, or is it not appropriate yeah. for the situation? But she did, they didn't, I get her to film new footage. They went, they got to Japan to have the actress who played the go, Pandora the Witch. They got her to record extra phrases and film new footage. They did that. Yeah. Well, that, that was done here, but I thought it was with the, with the double. Well, the, they brought in, they brought the double during season two. That was oh, well, that was, yeah. there was, there was footage shot here in the United States using Goldar and some of the other people. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, the girls, the girls doing the, the costume for that, so you're signing autographs. Oh, okay. But they, so they, they shot something in Japan because the reason is the Japanese don't have the plosives or the, the, the M's or the P's. So all their lives have been uh, never making a P or an M, and it's really hard for us to write lines in English that made sense because you can't say, I'm going to blow you up. Away, yeah. If there's no B, if, if, yeah. What were you saying? There was no M or P. So it goes B. Yeah. My pulse is pro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Half of us are made monster and power rangers. <laughs> you're missing some key words. <laughs> yeah, you're missing make my monster grow. There's you're missing half the words. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, but yeah. So yeah. Next question. Uh, this is kind of for anybody that can answer, I guess. Um, what sort of like. Production or behind the scenes type of thing was the one that stuck out in mind was, oh god, we messed up, we messed up so hard. Any sort of things like that? Every episode? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I remember, uh, this one comes to mind, I don't know if it 
like is exactly trash and foul. But there was an episode in the Japanese where the Blue Ranger was like prisoner or something like that, and did not mourn and did not fight. So this was, you know, first 20 episodes. And so that was made a note of in, in the story. You know, it was not, but later, we're talking months later, when it came, they, they shot with the Blue Ranger, they just used the stock footage. I'm just standing, you know, the morphing time, they had put them in, and he was the fight, and it became such a big deal amongst the producers of whether or not we needed to, like, like create a, you know, like would anyone notice there isn't a shot of the Blue Ranger fighting in this scene? Yeah. <laughs> like, because, because, you know, the footage always covers everybody, which isn't what, I, we, we kind of joke the chain gang, where they're like, you know, like prisoners all chained at the ankle, because every scene, they're all lined up so you can see each one of them, and every single one of them needs a shot. So I remember that just being like, like a mess up that was freaking people out. Are we gonna reshoot this, are we gonna do that? And I think they just put it out there. Nobody ever noticed. Okay, so go home and find out episode it is, guys. Yeah, it remembers what I'm talking about. I, I can say that I can, think, I can think of two things that I've heard of that made people go, oh! Uh, oh, one was like, I think one was more like, oh! And the other one was like, oh. The oh was, Greg Reynolds' story about the first time using the Dawson Kruger head. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, apparently, they didn't have the proper power transformer for his servos, and uh, I don't know if you've ever uh, set too much power into a motor. Uh, it tends to lead to some fire. So apparently, when there were there was basically smoke coming out of Doggy's ears the first time he addressed the Rangers on set. Yep, prosthetic fire. So, so they nearly, so they nearly burned John Tui alive. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then, and then from you, from your, your era, I imagine, uh, I've, I've heard that the realization of the, uh, see, the, the ethnic alignments of the colorations was, uh, was something of a, of an oopsie. Well, I mean, to be fair though, uh, we had a different yellow ranger in the pilot. So a yeah, lot of, yeah. So Audrey, so Audrey your pilot. So it wasn't intentional. So yeah, I think that I actually thought that Walter was was earlier considered for for Jason. Is that right? Uh, I don't know. Uh, for Jason Grant, though, for, for no, no, okay, for the role. Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I like I said earlier, the whole thing with the colors and the, the rangers and their ethnicity. No one thought that we should put the best back in the right part. And also it was like, oh, everyone started complaining about like, the Asian girls, the yellow, the, the African American guys, the black. It's like, oh, you're right. That's uh, yeah. weird. You <laughs> <laughs> mentioned that out, so we didn't do that again. But none of us thought of it. Uh, not, I didn't have 50 episodes where I realized, oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, cool. Next question. Hi. Uh, I'm a little familiar with the Super Sentai a series, but not much. That's OK. I, I, I'll fix that. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, I know we draw some of the stock footage and whatnot, but how close or how far away is the American version from the episode from which the footage was borrowed? Well, oh, it depends on the season a lot. Yeah, it depends on the episode. Yeah. So, yeah, I can only speak of the first season, but the, the original Japanese show, I mean, how to put it? We were tied to the general idea of it. I mean, we had these fight footage, we had to get there, but the stories rarely ever connected because the Japanese shows were, were Baba Yaga, which is like a Russian witch that tortured children. Like every other episode, she's capturing children and imprisoning them and threatening children and all these crazy things with children. So none of that was usable. There is one episode of Michael Power Rangers that had the same premise as uh, uh, Michael and Punks, where they turned them, where they got put under a spell, turned the punks. That's the only episode of MNPR that copied the same premise. As for later seasons, uh, once uh, Jonathan got was uh, was uh, as an example producer, they started leaning more on adapting the some of the episodes from the Japanese footage, starting with In Space. Yeah. Um, Psycho Rangers was pretty much shot for shot at times from the Japanese original, like. Uh, but some seasons were, you know, leaned into it. Some seasons leaned against it. Uh, but I, I think I would say Lost Galaxy did both. Lost Galaxy <laughs> went all over the place. 
<laughs> but yeah, no, so, so some seasons they definitely like said, Japanese footage, screw it, I'll do my own thing. And some seasons they're just like, what? I'm not gonna fix it. I have a, I have a blueprint here, it's gonna work with it. But yeah, I had to admit it was it was just hard to the ship at that point in time. Yeah. yeah. Doug and Amber doing it, it was a lot more free. John was trying to make things as similar and Koichi kind of changed things on that. So it was, they all changed every year. And I started battling with them and I realized that was a waste of time. So, <laughs> oh, not quite. I mean, it's, I, I get into discussions with certain people that would say, my daughter loves, really wants to see these two rangers kiss. I'm going, your daughter is not watching the show and she's 17 and it's not making her watch the show. <laughs> so there's just different battles when they're trying to get things done. So depending on the producer, I don't know that's your question. Yeah. But it wasn't exactly following, it was all relative. Yeah, there, there was definitely uh, a move towards it being closer to the same time. Well, it's been John Jones able to design the lead training. Yeah, yeah. Well, Wild you. Force, Samurai, um, especially those, those two seasons. Um, but also, just to just kind of go back to the very early days in the development room, at the beginning, every executive was brought on. Like, I wanted everyone's input. And it was sort of became a last man standing as other people like lost interest or had other things. And so slowly the executives started going away. But in the beginning, there was a real battle for the direction of the show. There was what I would call, what I always jokingly called the Gilligan's Island camp, which like I was one of them. I would say I was a Gilligan's Island guy. I once advocated that they should never wear different clothes. <laughs> They, they actually, that started happening later. Yeah, I, I was in that camp and there was quite a few, and then there were people, and Jonathan really sticks out, that really wanted to kind of root it into a more reality. And you can see that when he takes over the show, that it becomes much more reality-based show, where the first season, the Gilligan Island people kind of had control. It was more of a goofy show, more campy. Yeah, when Jonathan took control, he would never let them change clothes. Yeah, that, that's, 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 that's how I kind of put that way. Stop wearing the same clothes, John, for God's sake. Oh, look at you. There was one point, I mean, this didn't really make it anywhere, but there was one point it was being considered uh, to please the network to do it like the old Batman show with the pal and stuff. It was, it was being floated. I'm just saying, I'm just saying there was a meeting about it. Like, like, hey, maybe you know, to please the network and kind of make it more campy, that when they kick, it would be like pow and zap and all that. It didn't go very far, but it was talked about. I just, I just want to know if these two gentlemen are, are familiar with, have, have you heard of uh, the term reversion thing? The, uh, have you heard of the reversion thing? They, they did an edit on TV. Oh, yes. They, they, yeah. they, they edited the show much like that. They went back into the first season and re-edited it to add cool new special effects and like the it, and stuff. It was awful. Like it, it was, it was. It was a thing. We're moving on now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and the hype of uh, Orange Popularity was there, like, and he talks about making an American original team. So, American original team, was there any talks about, uh, on you guys know that part? Um, no, because always, it's a money thing. Yeah. It came down, they had, they had the footage, and the footage, even though it got more expensive, was still free by comparison to reshooting it here. Yeah. I mean, uh, they did do, uh, it, uh, seasons two and three were almost a lot of American shooting. Yeah. And when we got to like, you know, things like uh, Life's Rescue, they made the American Rangers just like the toy line needs six Rangers and Japan only made five. We're making a titanium Ranger because we need that sweet six Ranger money. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Scott, were you involved with uh, Mrs. Benson Yeah, I directed that over. That was all original. Yeah, that was all that was Bob Hughes, it was all original. Yeah. And Bob did, he directed the first time. There were 10 episodes or all the Green Ranger episodes in the very beginning of Power Rangers. And he then he was the producer on Dread Troopers and Beetle Borgs and Mask Rider and got the Micros producer credits on Dread Troopers and stuff. So they, they, they kind of did with Mystic Knights and then they got canceled to make more, they put all the budget towards Power Rangers. Yeah. yeah. I was actually, had, I made the mistake of telling all the Irish crew when I was over there, I said, come on over here and come to America and come visit us and come stay for a few days. They go, don't tell the Irish that. What are you talking about? The first one came over three weeks later, stayed for a month. The next one came over, stayed for six weeks. And then the one girl who was a star of Mr. Knights, she was at our house and we went over to the video place with me, all the graphic stuff. And someone walks up, Scott, you hear what happened? I went, 
They canceled Mr. Night, Mr. Night. So the girl's standing there and she went, oh. Oh. And then, uh, no, but thanks for telling the star. <laughs> or as well. I just wanted to go back because you, you mentioned about the money. I just wanted you to appreciate how how much money we're talking about because I toured the Japanese studios. Like I've gone over to Japan twice and I've seen what they had and what they were doing. They had an infrastructure built. I mean, they had departments already in place to produce this footage and they had a machine out there producing it. And for us to have done what they were doing at that time, I mean, the show, yeah, we were, had to have built a second studio. I mean, it's just, the, it's not just the salaries. There was an infrastructure in place. There was an experience in place. They had the talent already in place. Yeah. All right, the last question, because we're, we're out of time. How was 50 episodes of Hugh Ranger adapted into 60 episodes of MMPR season one? Uh, uh, well, if, uh, remember, they commissioned new footage from Japan. They went to Japan and said, we, we, we need more footage. And they got, they got Japanese stuntmen to put on the suits. They, and they did a little bit of Power Rangers things in there. There's a couple episodes where like, they were talking to communicators. The, the, the two Rangers didn't have communicators, but the Power Rangers did. So they actually told the Japanese stunt guys filming the new things to like, use them as a communicator. Because you know, that's the sort of thing that, you know, that, that, they, that cause this was, you know, the Savant team saying, make us more footage, we need more. Yeah, the, the, the footage was customized for Power Rangers. So there were no, there were no Japanese stories for about like 20 or so Power Rangers episodes. They just made battle footage that fit with the aesthetic of Power Rangers. For instance, oh, it's like, hey, can you make the green ranger and the pink ranger kind of seem a little more affectionate to each other? Hey, can you give the blue ranger some gadgets for this one? So if you ever see those early Mighty Morphin episodes and you notice, hey, the blue ranger has an invention in this episode and that's Japanese footage, that was footage that was made specifically for Power Rangers. Most of it was stuff after Doomsday. Yes, yeah, well, um, that, was, that was pretty much like the after Tuesday, they did like three episodes of scrambling to use the last of the footage they, that they thought was unusable. Yeah. And, and reuse some stuff. Yeah. And with the but, but yeah. also like going back to that infrastructure I was talking about. I mean, the yeah. Japanese, they had costumes from other shows, not just Power Ranger shows. They had costumes in place and all that. So they were able to produce, as I recall, it was 15, but there might have been more. Uh, there was, it, it's built it's still into the yeah. Yeah. Um, they may have just kept producing. Like I said, that was basically when I was out of the show. So the first few months, actually, of season two, were still, they were still using the YouTube footage, so you would see the Thunder Megazord do a swipe, and then the monster would be being destroyed in a separate shot, so that you couldn't see that it was more of a uh, G-Ranger that kind of thing. So, but, all right, guys, thank you very much. I want to also want to thank everyone as, you know, for A, suffering through the craziness that this con has been. <laughs> it's been a little tumultuous, it's been insane. And I want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for being here at this convention. We can't run Power Power without you. I want to thank, so thank you guys, and thank our wonderful